What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Spinning True. Today I'm trying something a little bit different and I'm going to show you a way I found to slightly sand down a seat post if it doesn't quite fit into a bicycle frame correctly. So this is a 1988 Rally Technium. I don't know what the original seat post diameter was, but I measured it using a seat post sizer and came out to 26.8 millimeters. So I bought a 26.8 millimeter seat post, put it in there, and it was extremely tight. It barely fit. It scratched the seat post like crazy, and it wasn't really good. And I also have already honed out the inside of that seat tube. So I tried to 26.6, and that was too loose. So I'm somewhere in the middle, and I have heard of this happening. I have heard of slight differences between different brands, or maybe it's a 26.7 if that's a thing. I'm not really sure, but I found a way of sanding down the seat post I bought to make it fit better. I'm going to show you that technique. Of course, a caveat here that if you remove material from a seat post, you're going to make it a little bit weaker, so use this with caution. And also, you can use this if you just want to polish up an older seat post. This will work just as well. So let me show you the trick I found. It involves a drill, and then I have an attachment in my drill, which is actually a sanding drum. And it is from a kit I got at Ace Hardware. It looks like this. It comes with a bunch of little round sanding things. Whoops, I'm kicking the light here. Let's see. That. Lights are being a bit temperamental, but basically this sanding disc allows you to chuck your seat post into your drill. Now, with a 26.8, it is a little bit small. So what I did is I padded that out with a little piece of cloth. And that worked just fine. So... I wrapped it around the little sanding thing. Kind of like so, such that the cloth doesn't come too far down towards the drill because it could get wrapped around the chuck. And then you can insert the seat post, kind of twist it on. And then you can tighten down the little sanding thing. This takes a half inch wrench because I'm here in the US. There we go. It will slip if you put too much pressure on there, but now I basically have a little lathe. And then what you can do is you can use various types of sandpaper to polish this. So right now it has a dull finish on it. When I started doing this, I used 220 grit and then I went with 400 and that was the finest I had. And then I read about polishing aluminum and apparently you can get a mirror polish at a thousand grit. So I went to the hardware store this morning and they had 600 grit and 1500 grit and nothing in between. So I'll try the 600, then go to the 1500, and hopefully that's enough um, to get this polished. I, that is quite a big jump, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how this works in a sec. It's loud, it also vibrates a little bit because obviously your seat post is not perfectly round. It has this protruding from it. There's an eccentricity here. So you wanna be careful. Um, you know, I'm not saying this couldn't damage your drill, but I'm gonna mask up here because there's gonna be aluminum particles floating through the air and show you how I polish a seat post. Okay, this is 220 grit. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So if you're sanding down your seat post, you want to go until it fits into your frame. If you're just polishing the seat post, go until it's smooth. You're never going to get all these scratches out, but you're going to get it a lot smoother. Okay, so after the 220 grit, basically you can see some fine scratches all up and down the seat post. So now I'm going to switch to the 400 grit, see what that looks like. It is obviously much more stable holding at this end. Um, when you get to this end, there's a lot more sort of looseness in this and, you know, like I said, just be really careful and, you know, be aware that you could start damaging your drill or hurting yourself. But if you, you know, do this carefully, it should be fine, but I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you what I did. So. Another use for this is 
This is a Calloy branded seat post. It had a painted on logo. You can also use this to take that logo off if you don't like the logo. But now I'm gonna try a finer grit. Let's try the uh, 600 and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's definitely you know, taking material off. Still quite scratched. My, uh, I'll take my watch off. My watch is starting to get, to irritate me on my wrist from all the vibrations. And vibrations are generally dangerous. So you wanna minimize vibrations like that. Um, don't do this regularly. It's not a good idea. But now and then, I don't think it's gonna kill me. So. Okay, now I'm gonna try the 1500. There are sort of micro scratches all up and down this still, but hopefully this fine grit will get rid of that. Here we go once again. Okay, so the 1500 did a pretty decent job, but it's not a mirror polish like I was hoping for. And I was thinking that there were still scratches from the rougher sandpaper, but then I took the 1500 and polished this way and I could see scratches in the aluminum. So I think the next step might be to actually polish the aluminum. So I'm gonna get some polish and a rag and uh, use the drill again to uh, see how good of a finish I can get on the seat post. I know it's, it's decent, but if you look close, you'll see that there are all these little scratches in there and I'd love to get rid of those. Okay, so I was gonna switch to polish, but I did actually come across some 3000 grit sandpaper at Home Depot and figured I'd try that and see what kind of a finish this gives before I tried polishing the seat post. Okay, that looks really good actually. Um, also, I chucked it in the drill really straight that time, so it wasn't vibrating so bad. But that looks almost perfect. There are maybe some micro scratches left, but uh, the overall surface um, away from where it's just been scratched from other stuff is pretty shiny. So I'm gonna do a little more with this, and then I will try some kind of polish and see how good I can get this. Wow, that's just a much smoother sanding experience than I had with the higher grid sandpaper. It's like there's, it almost looks like water spots on there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, also, this seat post does have some scratches. There's something, or there was something in the seat tube on the bike that was scratching this. So, um, you know, it's just not gonna be perfect, but I would like to get more of a shiny finish. And I think this looks pretty good, but let's try a polishing and see how good we can actually get it. Okay, so I don't have any specific aluminum polish, but I do have this block of general polishing compound. It says, for first stage polishing of soft metals and final buffing of hard metals, I'd say aluminum is a pretty soft metal, so we'll see what, what kind of finish we get. This is really good for stropping knives. That's what I use it for. And I usually use it on a piece of box board like this. So that's how I've applied it. And let's try it out on the seat post. Okay, I'd say that's, you know, really quite good. Um, I might do that one more time. You can actually see a lot of metal particles on the cardboard, believe it or not. And the thing with cardboard and box board is that it's actually kind of an abrasive to begin with. So that's why cardboard works well as a knife straw. You can actually take off steel with it. And then if you put a polishing compound on it, it, you know, takes off even more. It's not a huge amount. But on aluminum, which is pretty soft, you can see quite a lot of, you know, metal particles on there. And, um, you know, I'm quite impressed. I think that's pretty good. It's, you know, again, not, not perfect, but I was able to reduce the diameter of the seat post by, you know, like, I don't know. The logo that says 26.8 is still visible. 
Maybe I took off like 0.2 millimeters or something. Let's do one final polish and then get this back on the bike. You know, just for the heck of it, I'm going to use a piece of box board that doesn't have any compound on it and see what that does. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll go this way. Cool. Well, there was a spot on here, I don't know if you saw it, that had some excess polish or something, and it's taken that off. Wow. I'm really very impressed. Aside from this spot where it got scratched from the seat post, from the seat tube, um, you know, it's a pretty dang good job, I'd say. So I'm very happy with that. And once again, you can see little bits of metal all on that box board, if you didn't believe me from last time. So really cool. And uh, now let's uh, get on the bike and I'll show you the final product. Okay, let's get a little grease in that seat tube. And then I'll insert it and um, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's still, you know, maybe it's a little tight still, but at least I can get it in there. And it seems like it binds up a little further down in that, that seed tube. There is definitely something in there that's scratching it, but I looked and looked and was not able to figure it out. But as far as the finish goes, I'd say that is, you know, pretty nice overall. Here's another look at that seat post. You know, there are a couple imperfections like this spot here, but compared to the handlebars, which are just polished the way they came from the factory, um, you know, I'd say that looks, you know, really good. And, you know, now I've got a seat post that I can actually get into the frame and it's gonna look very good on the bike, I think. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that little seat post polishing trick. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and have a great rest of your day.